Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back to talk about the March 14th, 2024 balance adjustment preview. And it's a patch to quote a content creator that I really enjoy, MTash. This changes everything. Okay, maybe it doesn't, but it's a really good balance adjustment preview, in my opinion. And it's something we sorely need because right now, the state of the game. It's kind of dry, right? Not a lot going on. There's a lot of doom saying and things like that. But I got to say, they dropped this a day early. And in my opinion, it's quite good and will definitely get people talking and brewing for at least the next couple of weeks. So let's talk about what's in the patch. We've got Little Queen Charlotte, Top Model Lulica, Requiem Rowana, Clarissa, Falconer Clurry. Victorious Flag for the Artifact. And then we have changes to Rage, which is a buff that characters like Ambitious Tywin get. And also four Mage Constellations. I never thought I'd see them actually change Zodiac Symbols in Balance Adjustment Previews. But honestly, I'm here for it. We kind of need this. One of the main reasons for the Awakened Potential Update was to correct how poor the balance was on the Zodiac constellations in this game. And well, since that system got scrapped, some of us were wondering if they would actually implement some of the proposed ideas in there. Well, here you go. This is it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into it, right? You already know the deal. And in case you don't, and you're new here, how we do things is we talk about first what I think the character actually needs in order to be good. So let's start with Little Queen Charlotte. I think Little Queen Charlotte's base kit is quite strong. Judgment giving her essentially immunity all the time with great multipliers. Nothing to complain about with that. It's great for Lone Crest and Bologna, right? Her S2 passive is basically Adamant Shield. Love that. Super, super good. Also some built-in CR push. What's not to love? Will of La Mer gives you healing, big damage, splash damage, right? It gives her a defined niche. Awesome. So why does this character have issues? Well, it's because she needs more stats. That's the main thing that the character actually needs. She is a warrior of the Libra Zodiac symbol. So she's got balanced stat types. And she essentially needs to be very, very bulky in order to do her job. So what they gave her here is they gave her extinction on her S3, the Will of Lemaire, which is a welcome change, but it doesn't actually fix any of her problems. Great when it happens. But again, it's not the main thing she needed. The more interesting thing with this character is the imprint concentration, right? It went from defense percentage, which is bulk, which she needs, to critical hit chance percentage, which is about 17%. And that seems like we're going backwards, right? Because we need bulk. Until you remember that 18% defense is essentially one roll of defense on a piece of gear with a reforge. Like if you start with a max defense uh, score on a piece and then you roll max defense and you reforge it, that's basically what you're getting with that imprint concentration. Now, if you compare that to critical hit chance, where you can get five at start, five at max, you basically need two rolls in critical hit chance in order to get roughly around where we have here, around 17 to 18% critical hit chance from that imprint. Basically, from a number standpoint, critical hit chance as an imprint is worth more. So if you actually have imprints on your Little Queen Charlotte, it is actually easier to trade out your critical hit chance on the character for defense. You actually do get a slight buff to stats. This isn't a huge change, but it definitely does help Little Queen Charlotte. It is, does give her exactly what she needs, even if it's only a minor one. I know I personally will probably be trying to re-gear my Little Queen Charlotte and use her because I do think she is well-positioned in the format. It's just hard for people who aren't dedicated Maid Chloe slash Crimson Armin drafters like, you know, uh, KHM in the past or like Big Smo or even Car, right? Like these are the kinds of players that will always try to draft the Carmen plus Maid core. Little Queen slots in super well into that core. And uh, unless you were a diehard with that core, it was kind of hard to, to actually uh, take advantage of it. But the fact that this helps her current build is good. 
And the fact that we have this means that alternative builds off of Hellcutter also might see the light of day. I remember back in the day, there was a reasonably fast Little Queen Charlotte that you could use to kind of nuke one unit. And that was kind of like her whole deal. I it wouldn't surprise me if somebody tries to bring out a fast Little Queen Charlotte, right? Uh, with these changes. Because again, uh, this is a pretty big imprint concentration. It is next to team wide speed, largely considered the best one in the entire game. So. Not a crazy huge change. Still pretty good though. Next up, we have Top Model Lulica. So Top Model Lulica's biggest issue has always been that she is a mid-speed mage with no bulk. Meaning if she gets outsped, she absolutely gets destroyed, right? The other thing that is a problem is that her attack buff is tied to her S2 victory pose. Which means... That if your opponent decides to hold that ability hostage with like a Politus or a Selene, for example, then her S3 Demolish doesn't actually do enough damage to win you the game, right? Or do at least the thing that you need her to do. And that's really disheartening. So those are the two major issues that you need to address on this character because otherwise she's just not going to be favored over other aggressive options, right? Aggressive damage dealing options. So there's a lot of green text here, but uh, let's break it down. So now victory pose grants a barrier for three turns and it's based on the caster's level uh, in exchange for this CR push to all allies being moved to demolish, which we'll talk to about in a second. Um, pretty good change because it addresses the fact that she's squishy. Right? That's pretty good. Any of these bearer strength increases proportional to caster's level have traditionally been pretty strong. Just look at Para. So this is definitely uh, a pretty good change, honestly. Depending on how big the barrier actually is, there might be some world where maybe, just maybe, Bruiser, top model Lulica could be a thing. We will see. Uh, we have to wait for the numbers, right? So uh, there's also here, it increases the attack of all allies except for Lulica. So... The team-wide utility is there. Honestly, I feel like they should have just stapled this, right? The uh, the full attack buff except for the caster. Just stick it all here, right, on Demolish because the other big change here is increases the attack of the caster for three turns before using the Demolish skill, which is pretty big. So now you can't really stop her from having the damage that she needs in order to do her job, right? And then, of course, again, like I said, the increases combat radius of all eyes by 20%, the pseudo closer, Charles. They just stapled it on here. So they've made the use case better. Like you can't hold this character hostage anymore with things like Celine, right? It just doesn't work. Uh, so that's a big change. This helps our squishiness, right? Big change. Increased damage here is nice because it allows you to potentially nuke things. Because like if you don't kill, well, then the character doesn't, again, have any inherent value. And because she is a mage, she could hold books. So you could just soul burn and get the damage there, right? So the last thing to talk about that we didn't address is speed, but we'll come back to that at the end of the video because, well, spoiler alert, they did give her increased speed, and that will be found in the Zodiac constellations at the end here. So uh, overall, I expect the use case of top model Lulica to improve. I do think people will be excited to try this character out. I know Genizad, this is one of his favorite characters, if not his favorite character, in the entire game. So I know he'll be testing this character. I think pretty heavily. Uh, and I do think that the character will probably be playable after this. How good? I don't know. But it feels kind of like a, like a specimen says glow up. Where the character is definitely playable. At top level. Just might not be the most meta pick. Right? This is a good set of changes in my opinion. Next up is Requiem Rowana. So Requiem Rowana. Is a character that a lot of players famously think is very bad uh, is not very good and needs a buff uh, that is something i see a lot on social media uh, and when talking with other people in the community um but those of us who play at like the emperor or legend level in world arena constantly know that this character is nightmarish to play against because well it's like having another lua on the opposing team except it deals damage uh, it, she's very strong, but the thing is only the biggest whales can really bring out that full potential because her gear requirements are super insane, 
And that's honestly one of the things I was looking for with a buffer is to lower her insane gear requirements because not everyone has access to the kinds of gear that makes this character pretty good. The other thing that has made her play kind of decline since her release, right? She used to be a pretty good fourth, fifth pick for Cleave. She's kind of declined in recent months because Inner Abyss from Abyssal Euphine, well, that cuts Requiem Rowana's Boundless Obsession passive in half. And that makes it so that it's very difficult to actually use her. So when the most common DPS in the format hoses your character's entire gimmick, yeah, there's a reason why she started to see even less play uh, than before. So looking at the actual changes they got rid of can only be activated once per turn on Balance Obsession. So now Abyssal Euphine can't really wreck you as hard if you put somebody like Ran or Lua with an extra turn in the front. That's super good, right? Uh, in fact, honestly, this whole patch, when I think about it, feels like a, a hate letter to Abyssal. We just had Little Queen Charlotte, who's an anti-dark unit. Top model Lulica, who has Extinction, which Abyssal is commonly played on Holy Sack. Now you have Boundless Obsession to get around it, right? Ugh. So that's good change. This next one, though, on her S3 Eternal Lament, this one I am not so sure about. So we got rid of the damage scaling, like Mobile Weapon Siegfried. We just increased the base damage on Eternal Lament. That's fine. I'm good with that change, right? You're never getting off more than one Eternal Lament in a game. This is a Cleave character, right? The game's just supposed to be over uh, in a hurry. But this other one, this Dispelling One Buff one, right? This is, uh, it's scary. For those of you who don't have Requiem Ruana or have never played against Requiem Ruana, her most common build is six hit set. She commonly has like 250 plus effectiveness. That's going to get everybody in the game under 350 percent effect resistance so if your opponent takes turn one and it's an extra turn character like ran even if you have abyssal like rwan is taking a turn and you're getting your cooldowns and your cr pushback there's nothing you could do about it pretty much so that's the thing that's terrifying to me is i don't know if we're going to go into uh, a new age of cleave where rwana reigns supreme that's probably uh, not going to happen, but you never know. I do think that this is a strong change. I'm not a cleaver. I can't speak to how insane it actually is. I have not watched Kana's video, but I did see that the, the one he put out for this patch earlier today did have Rowana on the thumbnail, which leads me to believe it's probably pretty good, right? So, yeah. Rowana, if you're, a, you're somebody who has her built and uh, you like to cleave with her, this is a good set of changes for you. All right, let's move on to Clarissa. This is probably like the dud pick, I would say, of the patch, but you never know, right? So I have here written down increase hunt viability or rift viability, question mark, because that's kind of where you use Clarissa, right? She's pretty much only a Wyvern 13 character, right? People build their starter teams around her and eventually transition into a one-shot team with her. Maybe if we go to Blue Rift, uh, after Red Rift, she might have something there. That's kind of it. Other than that, something that gives her PvP viability is what I'm thinking of what she probably needs. So when we look at what she got, when an enemy is defeated with Hysteric, it resets the skill cooldown. And then there is a 70% chance to decrease defense up from 50% chance on the move. And the base damage on it was increased. That's pretty good because it makes it actually a lot easier for players to get into the Wyvern one-shot because the damage dealt increase makes it so. And if you manage to kill one of the little, uh, uh, whatever they're called, the little dragon newts uh, at the start of Wyvern 13, then you get a reset on Hysteric, which is really good because that means she's going to use it right away at the start of the next fight, get you a defense break. It seems good, right? Like This seems like it's probably pretty good for PvE gamers. Again, I'm not somebody who plays Clarissa. I know that it works. I'm going to let all that PvE math stuff, I'm going to let Tristan Wolf figure that out for you guys. But uh, on paper, this looks like something that helps her in PvE, not so much something that helps for PvP viability. Next up is Hezmana's girl, Falcon or Clurry. Uh, this one was really hard to figure out. Like, well, if I 
was going to buff Falcon or Clary, what was I going to give her? Because I, I, I struggled with it, right? Like, do you increase her speed? Do you make it so that her S3 doesn't trigger skills? So, like, gets around Selene and, like, Politis and things like that? Or do you just revert her old nerfs? Which, by the way, that's that's not the last one because Flurry, the S3, is just busted, right? That thing cannot be a shorter cooldown like it was in the past. You can't give her back her extra turn passive. It, unnerfed Falcon or Clurry, for those of you guys who are new, who weren't around during that time, it was nuts. I would say the original Falcon or Clurry before her changes might be one of the most overpowered characters in this game's history. And I really struggled to think of what would I do to buff Falcon or Clurry because I think she's still good. And I think she's actually just already underplayed. Hezmana has had great success with this character for a very long time. Falcon or Clurry Cleave is definitely a thing. If you just don't get outsped and you have a book on your team, Soulburn Flurry is just kind of game ending. So... The character is already really good. And again, I struggle to figure out a specific, aside from just make the character faster, that really helps her out. So they changed the achievement room. Before, it gave you extra damage on light step. The multiplier is pitiful on this thing. Nobody cares how much damage this thing actually deals. All they care about is, you know, Clurry go burr. They just want to go as fast as possible and throw birds at people, right? This change here is actually insane. Inflicts resource reduction on the target by 40% when using light step on the caster's turn. Falcon or Clurry just kind of out of nowhere with this one small change became one of the better counter pick characters in Epic 7's current metagame. So resource reduction, for those of you not in the know, it reduces fighting spirit on characters. So Falcon or Clurry with her superior speed can essentially lock Abyssal Euphine out of her actual uh, frenzy, right? That's pretty insane, especially if you didn't pick up Elvira. But it doesn't just end there. You use Conquer Elias, you press S1, it procs Lionheart Sermia's S2. No problem, just hit her, bonk her with Falcon or Clurry's S1. She can't S3 anymore, right? Just takes it away from her. You just go all in on people with... Uh, like Apocalypse Ravi, who's already in the ground, right? No fighting spirit for you. No CR pushes and heals. Oh, no. We don't get any of that here. Um, Lone Crest and Bologna, not really impacted by this because you take away 40 but give 20 in the process, so it's not really that big of a deal. And then Landy still has her salvos. She says she's still great. Fear of Boat's not there anymore, but still good. But for both of those characters, right, Landy and Lone Crest and Bologna, they are not particularly fast. They have no effect resistance. So one well-timed bird from Falcon or Clurry just makes it so you can end their life instantly because they'll just be death broken, right? So yeah, out of, out of nowhere, this one small change, like I said, it feels like Falcon or Clurry is kind of back on the menu. She's also pretty good versus like Laia, right? Like you just provoke Laia at the start. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's been so long since I played Falcon or Clurry, but it's a two-turn provoke. So the artifact doesn't get you out of that. Yeah, th this change, like I said, Falcon or Clurry might be back, right? I'm definitely, like, back on the menu. In fact, I'm going to put her on the thumbnail because I'm fairly confident that people will play Falcon or Clurry with this uh, set of changes. Maybe only as a counter pick, but uh, what if we actually did go back to that, that meta with first pick Falcon or Clurry? Let me know in the comments below if you were actually around when the meta was first pick Falcon or Clurry in World Arena. Because... Uh, that would be a crazy throwback. We were talking about how we needed something crazy to shake up the game. Imagine going back to first pick Falcon or Clary Manor, you guys. All right, moving on to the artifacts, we have Victorious Flag. So Victorious Flag has always been this like very niche, elemental-only artifact. It only really is helpful in something like Expedition, where you have to be type color advantage anyway. So we need to be less niche less restrictive in its use cases. So they did exactly just that. Instead of needing elemental advantage, you now just get a flat 16% damage increase and a flat 16% damage mitigation on the artifact, which is insane. Actually insane. This artifact would be ridiculous if it wasn't for this last statement here. 
This effect of this artifact applies only to earth, ice, and fire elemental heroes, right? So they left that part in. So, yeah, you can't use it on lights or darks. If this artifact could be used by anybody, just having strip 16% damage increase, 16% damage reduction would be nuts. But because it's locked to these three elements, that makes it a bit worse. And honestly, a lot of the RGBs that could use this, they have alternatives like mature sunglasses if they're a knight or like Draco plate if they're a warrior, which diminishes this artifact, right? It's very good, I think, after these changes. It's just not insane like it could have been if it applied to everybody. But if you are somebody who is newer, right? Who doesn't have Draco plate, doesn't have mature sunglasses or one of the alternatives that is akin to this, this is a good change. This is a good pickup. Victoria's Flag went from being a meme, just ignore it artifact, to one of the better artifacts to pick up from your guild. It's not as good as Proof of Valor, in my opinion. It's not as good as Warhorn, but I think it's probably the next best pickup. And it's something that you wouldn't scoff at somebody for putting on one of their characters in World Arena. Still great in Expedition, but greatly expanded use case. Great buff for this thing. Moving on to lasting effect balance adjustment. This is essentially the uh, the rage effect is something like Ambitious Tywin gets, right? There's not too many characters in the game that get rage. But this is uh, pretty good, though, overall. Because before it gave 10% attack, 10% speed, which is nice, but not, like, amazing. Now it's up to 20% attack and speed, so it's a little bit closer to, like, Vigor. We already know how Vigor impacts the game with 30% attack, 30% defense. Undispellable, 20% attack, 20% speed is pretty good. Like having a, you know, slightly faster, 10% faster Ambitious Tywin, I don't think anybody's really going to scoff at that because, well, Ambitious Tywin's very good right now. He, you know, Last Rider crowd kind of boxes him out, but when he's like available and usable, he's very, very strong. So yeah, this is a good change uh, overall, in my opinion. Like it's not anything major, but the characters that have this mechanic, they're going to be happy to see it. So the last thing to talk about, Constellation Balance Adjustment. This is pretty huge. I'm going to skip the overall here, right? This first part where it shows what it is because it's a little confusing, right? We see red text like we're removing six speed and getting 9% attack, right? And 8% critical hit chance. But then when you look at the overall changes to like Leo Mage, for example, you can see current versus before Leo being the, uh, the highest attack Zodiac in the game. So now we have the highest attack total still, but also we get... 23% critical hit chance, which makes characters like uh, Eternal Wanderer Ludwig easier to gear for Cleave or like Roy Mustang with the lifesteal build makes things just easier overall, right? So it's better to just look at the change stats so you can see what you're actually getting, right? So now we move on to Virgo Mage. This is Architect Laika and Quaric. Just two base speed, no other real changes here. But hey, two speed on Architect Laika, that's a pretty big deal because now this character is Conqueror Lily's tier speed. It's a huge deal for a lot of characters, right? Sagittarius Mage, this is top model Lulica uh, and Vivian. This is actually huge, four speed, massive, right? Because now top model Lulica doesn't have to be relegated to this like 270 to 290 tier. Like she's more akin to like a 280 to 300 tier now based on your gear. So that is a, a pretty big change. Is it enough? Who knows? We'll wait and see. Uh, I think it's really interesting that I obviously Vivian has this stat line because back in the day, people would build these insanely fast Vivians just to use her S3 to get immunity and attack buff for the team to protect them from debuffs. Uh, or use like the cleanse and then give yourself immunity uh, based on the EE. It'd be really funny if this resurgence in speed made people bring green Vivian back into the meta. Nuller Vault, if you're watching, please make it happen. I want to see somebody try it out. I think it's a pretty cool idea. To bring back the 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 green Vivian turn one setup, so we'll we'll see. But uh, good set of changes here. Pisces is perhaps the most interesting, right? This is only for auxiliary lots and Harado, but you can see it's a it's pretty big, right? Look at how substantial it is. We got rid of twenty percent critical chance, which let's be honest, auxiliary lots and Harado are never using that stat. Anybody, I better not see anybody be complaining that they lost twenty percent crit chance because we got five speed. Right. And also we got almost like 600 and change HP. Right. That is a pretty substantial boost to bulk. Mages usually do not get much higher than the low 5,000s. So being near the mid 5,000s 
is a, a pretty substantial change. Like auxiliary lots is going to be a lot faster and a lot tankier than he used to be. So yeah, this is probably of all the stat lines, the Pisces stat line is the one I think that got the best glow up uh, overall, right? And that that's going to be it. Like that's that's everything that's in this balance patch. Like I said, it's good, right? This definitely feels like a big shakeup that we need. It's going to get people talking. It's going to get people brewing. It's going to get content creators out there trying to show you more MLMs, which is always a, a good fun time. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. What do you guys all think uh, about this? This is one of, I think, the better, more well-rounded balance patches in a while. I don't really think I have any complaints. Like the Clarissa change is probably the worst thing in the patch. And even then, it seems great for new players just getting into the game that need help with Wyvern. So why am I going to complain about that? It's not targeted at me, but it's probably great for somebody else that is playing Epic 7. Uh, yeah, again, it's amazing. Really, really uh, love it. So with that out of the way, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later.